What does it really feel like to burn out? That's the subject of today's video and this is going to be a no frills, no funky editing video vlog style. Because as we came to the end of Stress Awareness Month, it got me thinking. I've shared all these tips, I've made all this channel, but I've never really spoken about how does it feel? What is the experience of burning out? It's going to be quite hard to film, I think, because right now I feel recovered. You know, I, I've got my zest for life back. I love doing the things I used to do. I've just come back from a run and I feel better than I have in a long time. And it's easy to forget that two months ago I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't do anything. I didn't know if I'd ever be the same person again. It's easy to forget that and get lost in the high of recovery. Welcome to Today Years Old. I'm a consultant recovering from burnout and on this channel, I'm gonna share you what it's like to really burn out. If you could kindly excuse the post-run windswept look, that would be great. Um, uh, and it's also extremely windy still, so if this is obscuring all the audio, then I don't know, maybe it's an improvement, I don't know. The message for this video though is very simple. Um, what I want you to take from this is if you identify with anything I say, then know two things. One is you're not alone, and the second is you can recover. It may take time lots of time potentially but you can you will recover and take it day by day for me burnout was an overwhelming sense of numbness and I can pinpoint very specifically the day I knew I had a problem before the Christmas break I was on an absolute high my career was coming together in the way I wanted it to I was learning new things and I was having the best time and I really wanted to keep that momentum over the Christmas break. So I decided to take on the Rafa Festive 500 Challenge. For those of you who don't know, it's a cycling challenge to cycle 500 kilometers between the 24th of December and the 31st of December. And I channeled all of my energy, literally all of it, into completing that challenge. Looking back now, I really wish I hadn't. It's pretty arbitrary. You don't get anything in return other than maybe smugness and an extra helping of roast dinner. But I refuse to allow myself to switch off, to relax. And even when I was supposed to be recovering between bike rides, I was just thinking about the next thing and the next goal. And I just didn't switch off at all over the Christmas break. I didn't allow myself to do that. And so when it came to the end of the Christmas holidays, my body did that for me. It really is too cold and windy to film outside. Um, so that's how it started, but then it grew into this numbness. And it's like being at an aquarium. You know when you look through the glass and you can see the fish and they're all going But they're a bit distorted because the water and the glass distorts it and it's not exactly the same. And that's what it felt like every day. I was getting up and looking through this aquarium. There were these people on the outside and they were living a normal life and I couldn't quite connect with it. Nothing really made me happy. Nothing really made me sad. Nothing really made me feel anything. And normally I can go out for a run if I'm feeling a bit stressed or overwhelmed and my brain's starting to shut down a little bit I can go out for a run and I feel better and then I'll, I'll dial back a bit and and it's okay but this wasn't like that at all I was running more trying to make that sense of connecting with the world around me come back and it just wasn't happening and until I thought I'd, I'd go for a bike ride and to be honest after having done the festive 500 that was too much. And the thing is, the challenge like that is great for your physical fitness, but I think I overdid it and I stopped really enjoying cycling either. So I tried to run and just no, no exercise, no yoga, running, walking, whatever. Nothing was making me feel anything at all. And it's all right for a day or two, but a week goes by. 
two weeks goes by, three weeks goes, a month, six weeks, eight weeks goes by, where, where do you make it stop? Normally, I'm somebody who works well under pressure. You know, I, I need the pressure, I need the pace to perform. Maybe that's why I ended up in the career I, I have. But I couldn't get excited even about that. You know, deadlines were coming and zooming by, and I felt nothing about them. And I have wanted this promotion for such a long time. And I have worked so hard for it. And I didn't care about it anymore. I didn't, I didn't want promotion. And I couldn't imagine a time when I ever did. And this is not the same for everybody. But for me personally, I am motivated by the upwards career ladder. And, and for me, success looks like moving up. And it didn't. For about three months, it didn't look like that. But not only that, I didn't know what it looked like at all. And it felt like my whole sense of identity was just disappearing away. I didn't know who I was anymore and I couldn't feel anything anymore. And you get to this point where it's so frustrating. You just want to feel something. You know, you, you can't feel sad, you can't feel happy, you can't feel angry. You just, you just feel nothing. It felt like such a failure, but I didn't even care that I was a failure. And I don't think it's about caring, maybe not caring is not the right word, because I wanted to care. I so wanted to care, but I couldn't, I just couldn't, I just couldn't connect, I couldn't make it, I couldn't feel anything at all. And I needed to say the words, I'm not okay. But every time somebody asked me if I was okay, I would say, I'm fine. Or the best one was when I wanted to tell my manager how I was feeling, but I couldn't quite bring myself to do so. So I said, can we have a call? And he said, yes. And I said, I've got an update on this delivery. And what I meant to say was, I am not okay and I need help, but what it came out as was, here's an update on this project. I don't think I'm alone, and if you're feeling like, wow, this sounds a bit like me, then know that you're not alone either. That it's perfectly okay to feel like this. It's perfectly normal at times. It's like a printer. You know, the printer tries to print paper faster and faster and faster than it can't, and it jams, the whole thing locks. You've got to find where the paper screwed up and pull the paper out. For me, that's exactly what burnout was like. You're going faster and faster and faster and faster until you can't, and then you completely stop. And it's like being suspended in time, emotionally suspended. It got to a point where I was performing the worst I ever have in my career. I mean, I was a completely useless colleague. I was unproductive, uh, not intentionally. I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't even understand the tasks I was supposed to be doing. And I'm also a, I, I lead some teams and I was a rubbish leader. I mean, I couldn't even get myself out of bed in the morning. How, how could I find the strength to lead other people? I didn't know. And probably what I should have said was, you know what guys, it's a bit tough at the moment. Uh, bear with me. But I tried to cover it up instead and it was just making it worse. And the whole thing was spiralling because I was trying to take on more work in the hope that more pressure would make me feel something eventually and I'd just need to take on one more task. And that extra task, that would be the thing that would cure me. And if you have already read my interview with Jen Romano, uh, she's an Accenture Managing Director, and she says, you can't outwork burnout. And she is absolutely correct. But at the time, I thought, nah, I'm sure, I'm sure I'm the exception to that, and that's an incredibly arrogant thing to think. Um, and I wouldn't normally say I'm an arrogant person, but I thought maybe I could be the exception. And you know what? I'm not special. Um, I, the rule applies to me too, and it'll apply to you too. Um, you you can't outwork burnout. And then what you actually do is you you make the problem bigger because you make not the problem not just for you you make it for everyone because you take on all this stuff and so you become a single point of failure for all this stuff you've got piling up on your plate and then you just let everyone down 
and it got to the point where I realised I just couldn't, I couldn't outwork it. And I thought long and hard about taking some time off. That thought really scared me and it took me maybe two weeks to decide I needed to take time off. But I, I basically got to this point where I realised if I don't change anything, then nothing will change and I will never feel better and I can't outwork it. So if I can't outwork it, what, what do I do? And that's when I decided that I would take some time off and I decided that I would just do whatever I wanted to do but I was actually very frightened to take that time off and I remember the night that I oh, knew this would be hard to film the night that I um, was my last working day I made I made my last working day a Monday because I thought if I have the Monday then I don't have to be spend the whole weekend worrying about it I can do the Monday and then I'll just call it a day in the evening and then it can kind of creep up on me without me knowing uh, and that night when I logged off to everybody and I said okay guys good luck when I closed my laptop for the last time I sat under my desk this is not one of my finest moments <laughs> I sat under my desk and I cried for hours because I just didn't know what was going to happen next. I didn't know how I was going to feel. Was it going to feel better? Was I going to wake up the next day and feel amazing? Or was it actually going to make it worse because I'd removed my reason to get up in the morning? So I think that night I had cake for dinner, cake and a cup of tea. And I just tried to treat it like any other normal end of the working day and decided I would make it tomorrow's problem. <laughs> These glasses mildly disguise how sweaty my hair is. Um, only mildly. <laughs> and I was very fortunate because uh, actually time off was exactly what I'd needed. And I'd always not been wanting to take time off before you know I have my holidays and that's it um but it was the best thing I ever did and I spent the first seven days doing whatever I wanted and it snowed as well and I went out and I played in the snow and I, I lived like a child in a way I lived spontaneously doing whatever it is that would make me happy that day it in the first thing I did was actually to repaint my kitchen um I noticed my kitchen, like I repainted things that had been, I did odd jobs that had been pending around the house for ages. And my house felt fresh and new and I tidied up and I cleaned up because I hadn't had the energy and frankly I hadn't cared about how the house looked for a long time. And anybody who knows me knows I'm an absolute clean freak. So for my house to be in a state uh, is, a, is a big thing. So I went and cleaned up the house, I repainted the kitchen, everything looked fresh and amazing and it was just the start really of, of proper recovery and I did lots of things. I, I watched a lot of telly, I watched a lot of rubbish on the telly and the first thing was just to remove all the guilt, do whatever makes you happy and, and, and don't feel any guilt about it. If I wanted to go for a run or I wanted to go on my bike, I wouldn't deny myself that but I wouldn't force myself out either. I did lots of reading actually and I, I kind of split my day between TV and reading and I read loads of interesting books and again I just picked up whatever looked interesting and, and I, I read some amazing things and after a while I, I picked up some kind of more more useful books in the span of recovering the first one being the subtle art of not giving a fuck <laughs> um, and uh, I actually did a book review on that um, so link to that in the description down below. It was the first book that kind of made me re-evaluate everything and think about how I'd been looking at the world and whether the way that I was viewing the world was actually part of the problem and I realised the answer was yes and it helped me to kind of get some better values and better values gave me better perspective. I actually ended up taking a total of three weeks off and when I came back, I, I still wasn't really sure that I was that recovered, but I also knew that no more time off would actually help help me recover either. And recovery for me started with the return of feeling something. And that was just anything really. You know, my, my runs actually started to make me feel better. I actually felt happy after a run, satisfied. 
and then that spreads into other areas of your life. You know, I felt contented. I felt like I had my purpose again. And that felt really good. And I would say the road to recovery isn't linear. I came back to work probably a bit too early, but also at the perfect time. By which I mean, as I said, no more extra time would really have made me feel any different. But um, you have to start somewhere. And it, the kind... How to put it? My emotions kind of came back. It was like a tidal wave. You know, you know, if you go to a canal and the lock opens and the kind of the water kind of go flooding out. And it was like that with emotions. And I kind of just went with it. It was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I would feel up and down and 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 anything really at any time. But I just embraced it. You know, whatever it is you're feeling, allow yourself to feel that. Don't fight it. And actually, setting up this channel and the blog were a huge part of the recovery for me. I knew I wasn't alone because so many people I saw also struggling with burnout. And as soon as I put my first blog up, it had something like seven and a half thousand views. And there were loads of people that reached out to me to say they were feeling the same way. uh, They could completely identify with it. And I I want to use this experience to help other people because I now feel recovered. And I would say it's taken maybe two months from the point of deciding to take time out. I would say it took maybe six weeks, six to eight weeks to really feel truly recovered again. And everyone's experience is different. Some people have reached out to me and said, you know what? After their burnout, they never felt the same again. Uh, I do feel like I'm back to back to me again. Uh, certainly the best parts of me, I, I, I feel like. Um, but everyone's experience is, is different. And that's why I set up this channel, to help others, to share my experience, to know that you're not alone, but that also that there is hope. You can recover, or you can you can use your experience to... Recover doesn't mean you have to go back to being your old self, because your old self will have the characteristics that took you there in the first place. But you can you can become the better version of whatever it is you want to be to to avoid this happening to you again. And also it helps me. It helps me to stay grounded in what's happened. And that's why this video, I really wanted to make it because actually you can get lost in the excitement of filming all the videos and the excitement of sharing the advice of helping others that you can kind of lose that perspective on how did you come to this place in the first place to have to recover and i'm glad i've made this video it's probably a bit rambly it's probably going to be quite long um if you've made it this far thank you very much uh maybe this is a bit of a self-indulgent video um but i i know that there will be people watching this who, who feel the same if you're one of those people feel free to drop a comment um, let us know what your experience is like. If it was different, I'd also love to hear about that. Um, you know, burnout is a massive umbrella term. You can experience burnout in so many different ways and it can have so many different flavours. Um, so yeah, drop a, drop a comment or just reach out. Um, there's various ways to get in touch, um, in the about page or I'll, I'll drop some in the description. But I want you to take two things from this video, as I said at the beginning. Know that you're not alone if you're feeling some symptoms of burnout. Uh, Know that you will recover. And the final one is know that there is help out there. Uh, I haven't really touched on how to get help in this video, uh, but I am going to make that as a future video. So stay tuned for that. Um, If you have made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate every person that has liked, has commented, subscribed, reached out to me direct. Um, it's amazing and I'm so glad to hear that it's helping other people and uh, I just hope that we can continue using this channel for that purpose. Please give it a like, comment, subscribe. Um, I haven't quite decided what to make the next video on yet so I will work on that. Thank you.